Our top story this morning, Billings police and school officials are taking action after a brawl near Billings Senior High was caught on camera. Q2's Russ Riesinger reports. She got it sent to her, I believe, on Snapchat. Um, that's where these kids have posted these videos is on Snapchat and social media. Shana Rhodes says she couldn't believe what she saw when her niece showed her this video of the fight that was posted on Snapchat. The brawl broke out Tuesday near Billings Senior High School. As you can see, a number of students were involved. At one point, several of them can be seen punching and kicking a student on the ground. I started crying. I, I can't believe that we have a generation that has no control because what it looked like to me is it looked like a mob of just kids losing it on one student. Both police and the school superintendent say they don't know what led to the fight, but they are aware of the incident and also of rumors that surfaced online saying there could be more violence. But there was rumors that she had heard there was going to be another fight today at the mall or at Pioneer Park and possibly involving knives or guns. Either way, rumor or not, it's getting to be very scary and out of control. And I think parents need to sit down with their kids, their high schoolers, and say, look, this isn't going to get you anywhere in life. And Russ also tells us school superintendent Greg Upham says they are working with police to get to the bottom of what happened and says that some of the students involved could possibly face criminal charges. Now looking at national headlines, at least 11 people and one deputy were killed in a shooting at a Southern California bar. The bar, located in Thousand Oaks, just west of Los Angeles, was filled with college students. They believe there were around 100 people inside the bar when the shooter opened fire. The shooter, who police are working to identify, was found dead. Attorney General Jeff Sessions is the latest top-ranking White House official to leave the administration. Sessions resigned yesterday after the president asked him to step down. President Trump said Matt Whitaker, the attorney general's chief of staff, would replace him on an acting basis. Whitaker will oversee all Justice Department matters, including the special counsel investigation led by Robert Mueller. And the winners have yet to be decided in some races, but this week's midterm elections have already made history. An estimated 113 million people cast ballots in 2018. That's nearly half the eligible voters in the country. It's the first time that more than 100 million votes were tallied in a midterm. Montana senior Senator John Tester is celebrating after he was declared the winner Wednesday morning. Just like his previous two victories in 2006 and 2012, the race wasn't called until the day after Election Day, and he won with less than 50 percent of the vote. The hard-fought victory over Republican Matt Rosendale and Libertarian Rick Breckinridge puts Tester in his third term. On Wednesday, he said fixing problems with health care, rural broadband access, and care for veterans top his his agenda. He also noted that President Trump came here four times to campaign against him, but that he'd like the president to come back again and take a good look at the problems facing the state that need to be fixed. We need to get some things done in Washington, D.C. We need to work together. We need to put aside the political pettiness and work together to get things done. And I will tell you why. Because if I has transversed this state, north, south, east, and west. The people I've talked to, the biggest issue they bring up is, why can't you guys work together? Well, we can, and we will. And it will happen because the American people are demanding it. Rosendale said despite the loss, his work for the people of Montana isn't done. He said he's going to continue to advocate for lower health care costs and more health care options in his position as state auditor. Representative Greg Gianforte's campaign released a statement on its victory. Congressman Gianforte said, quote, I'll continue putting Montana first and working with President Trump to keep our economy thriving, make our community safer, keep our public lands in public hands, and protect our Montana way of life. Kathleen Williams also sent a statement to supporters thanking them for their hard work while acknowledging that her effort came up short.
In crime news, more thefts at a West End apartment complex is now prompting an outcry from tenants and the property manager to further secure the building. Last month, an employee of the Happy Homes apartment complex on Shiloh Road and King was caught on video stealing prescription meds from an apartment after using a master key to gain entry. And now the same family was hit again by someone who broke into their garage. Billings Police confirmed multiple reports have been filed for similar crimes crimes. Rayanne Crick says her family moved to the complex after her husband lost his leg and pelvis to cancer. This is one of few disability accessible complexes, but now she doesn't feel safe. And so for us, we want to take an active stand because we believe that there are a lot of things that this management team could do to become more of a team member. Q2 also spoke to the general manager of Happy Homes, who says since the initial reports, the employee has been fired and charges are now pending. He also says they've stepped up security by adding deadbolt locks to the units and are also looking into cameras and security guards. Are you curious about how safe your neighborhood is? Billings Police have revealed a new tool that lets you map crime data where you live. The mapping system looks like this and is available at crimemapping.com. You use a map to scroll to your neighborhood and click on icons that show what crime was reported and where. Billings Police used the service years ago and with new software upgrades, the tool is back again. The database is updated daily at 4 a.m. And Billings Police are also changing up the way they get information out to the public by logging onto Twitter. From now on, the department will use the site for updates on public safety information, alerts, and evolving events. But the use of Twitter will take time. Those with the department say they'll need some patience as they figure out the best way to get out accurate information quickly. Their handle is at Billings PD. From the University of Montana campus, nearly a year after announcing the largest cuts in decades, university administrators say campus leaders have been able to develop a plan to save nearly $5 million but retain most of UM's programs. Provost John Harbour says the cuts will use a combination of reducing staff, some through voluntary buyouts and on-campus transfers, as well as realigning of classes. The cuts announced Wednesday will impact the humanities department the most, with 58 full-time equivalent positions eliminated. But Harbor told reporters that amounts to 12 percent of UM's total workforce and many of the reductions have already been made through voluntary departures and buyouts and reassignments in recent months. I'm really excited by the plans that uh, the teams I work with have in place for expanding summer programs, developing new online opportunities. I've been meeting with business leaders to talk about programs that meet the needs, the continuing education needs of their staff, um, more collaboration between our employers and the university. So I think my sense is there's a lot of optimism. There's still a lot of hard work to do, but there's a sense that, that we've got a plan in place, we can achieve this. Harbor says he's also encouraged by a rebound in student recruiting this year. Plans are to have the savings in place for the start of the 2022 fiscal year. Meanwhile, with Veterans Day coming up on Sunday, many local businesses are gearing up to offer something special to those who have served our country. This year, Winter Holler Dentistry is getting in on the charitable giving. Tomorrow, on Friday, November 9th, Winter Holler Dentistry and Oral Surgery will host its first annual Make a Smile Great Again event at their offices on the West End. All day Friday, veterans and active service members can receive any dental procedure that can be completed in one day. Ballistic Barber Shop will also be on site giving free haircuts to those in need. Dr. Winterholler says they hope to complete around $150,000 worth of dental work by day's end. In buildings, there's been a, a lack of dental care for veterans. There's a new dentist at the VA who's a fantastic guy um, who's kind of starting to fill that void. But there, there has been a huge lack of care for, for veterans in general in the country, but more specifically here locally. We'll be here until we can't move anymore. Uh, so I'm, I'm hoping that we can serve a couple hundred people. Winter Holler will accept patients on a first come first serve basis from 7 a.m. until 4 p.m. For more information on other events veterans can take advantage of this weekend, you can head to this story on KTVQ.com.